Hi there class, uh, this is a video to teach the EAS 354 students how to use the Gap Light Analyzer software for processing hemispherical photographs to extract LAI and other spectral components of the canopy. So in order to use the Gap Light Analyzer software, there's actually two components. The Gap Light Analyzer software only works on Windows XP. So you have to actually download from the Windows website the Windows Virtual PC and then Windows XP mode. So I already have loaded it here, but this is what it looks like. So with the Gaplight Analyzer software, it's a pretty simple GUI. And the first step is to open an image. So this is our first image. Um, as you can see here, it's a cloudy day, which is actually perfect for taking a hemispherical photo. We like to do it on a cloudier day than a bright day because then you get glare spots and things like that. But the first thing you're going to want to do is register your image. Luckily, there's uh, this handy tool right here that you can click and drag. What you want to do is that you want to click it and drag it around the radius of the photograph. Now if you don't get the edges exactly it's not a big deal because those are usually quite distorted and you don't get much information from the edge of the photograph uh, but try and capture the entirety of the photograph if you can. So once you've done that and you're happy with how it looks uh, just press OK and you'll see that it will create a duplicate image here between the two. Now this is the image that you will be working with and really this is just the comparison image which is actually quite handy. Um, so the first thing that you're going to want to do after this is you're going to want to make sure that your settings are correct. So you go to where is it? Sorry, it's this button right here. Edit setup configuration and that'll start with this little menu. Now the reason why having all your photographs pointing north, so the top of your photograph here is pointing north, why that's important is for this exact reason. Is that in the settings for when you're analyzing the uh, photographs, if everything is consistent it just makes processing go much quicker. Now for Costa Rica, our, these are our relative um, settings. You're going to be at about 10 degrees, 10 and a half degrees uh, north, and then you're going to be about 85 degrees west of the meridian. So once you have this set up, and then you go to resolution, resolution, you're going to want to change the growing season start date and end dates to around May 15th and February 2nd because that is when the tropical dry forest hits its wet and dry seasons. And then for radiation, radiation you will be able to get from your wireless sensor node or your uh, PAR uh, sensor and then you want to be able to change how much radiation is coming in every day. So usually it's going to be at around 1700 especially in the dry season. and But this can change. The rest of the settings you should be able to leave fairly clear, except for maybe this clear sky transmission coefficient. On a clearer day, it will be higher. On a cloudier day, it will be lower. So for a day like this, it might be at something like 0 0.4. So once you have your configuration and your settings set up, then the next step is you can overlay the sky region and what this does is it tells you how the photograph is split up and how um, how like sun solar sun solar zenith angle will be affecting your picture as well which will, can be important because it can really influence your par readings um, especially if it's earlier or later in the day so from here you want to be able to choose a color pane. What this really does is depending on the photograph that you've taken 
when you change between these, it can really change the contrast between the sky and the vegetation, therefore allowing better, um, better manipulation of the threshold component, which is really the key component to analyzing the photograph for leaf area index. So usually blue is a pretty good filter to put on top of the image, um, just because it cuts out any of the blue sky in the background. Now that you've done that, really what you have to do is just choose the threshold. Now the threshold, as you can see, when I increase it, the image starts to get darker. When I start to decrease it, it starts to get lighter. So the goal of playing around with the threshold is that you want to make it look as close as possible to the original image so that you know that you're getting a good uh, true reflectance of what you actually captured. So for this one, as you can see, it's a real art because you can see as I keep on increasing the threshold, you start to get shading in this area from the clouds and then you start to lose some of the actual gaps in the canopy. So I would say anywhere for this image between 140 and 150, you're doing pretty good. But for each image, it's different, especially depending on if you have glare spots or not. So I would set it to around 147 for this image, because you can see that you're getting the structure of the trees, the outlines of the trees, and you're still getting some of the uh, spots in the canopy where light is actually still coming through. Now the final step is just to run your calculation. You want to be running it for both canopy structure and transmitted gap light. Calculate. And then once it has proceeded with its calculations, um, you're going to want to record this information in an Excel sheet in order to make sure that you keep it. So you will want to record like the settings that you used for that image, just so you can know if you have to troubleshoot down the line what the settings were and what might have differed between the picture settings. But you also want to record all this information down. The really the difference between your LIA four ring and your LIA five ring is how far it's capturing. So the LAI 5 ring will capture everything up to the edge of the picture, whilst the 4 ring goes right here, right in one step below. And usually the LAI 4 ring is a little bit more accurate than the 5 ring, just because towards the edge here, you start to get distortion from the actual lens. So that is your basic rundown of how to work uh, the Gaplight Analyzer software.